welcome again to the Actors Bow. This is Denise Parathrapat. How are you guys? I have such a special and different episode prepared for today with such an incredible guest. As updates for my life, I am full on watching Bridgerton on Netflix. I don't know if you're watching the show, everybody was talking about it and I had to get on it. And I have many opinions about it. I, I am enjoying the drama of the show. I'm enjoying the costumes. I'm enjoying um, the cast, mostly. It's, it's okay. I uh, have just some problems with, you know, the portrayal of the characters and the male figures in it. And I think it's so interesting that today's episode will kind of talk about that a little bit. I don't want to say more right now. Let me know if you watch the show too, Bridgerton. And if you do, I will share more of my thoughts about it. Before we get to this week's guest, let me introduce to you the Sunday Spotlight of this week. This week's Sunday Spotlight is Sofia Carrega Lozano. She is an actress that's currently living in New York City, but she was born and raised in Mexico. She is an international student and we love her at the Actors Vow. She's going to be talking about her experience moving to New York, her experience being an international student and how acting is when English is your second language. Sophia is a very young actress with lots to talk about and you can read her interview this Sunday in the Actors Vow Instagram page at the Actors Vow. But before that, if you want to find Sophia, she has an Instagram and that is at Sophia Correga Lozano at S-O-F-I-A-C-A-R-R-E-G-H-A-L-O-Z-A-N-O. Where do I even begin with this week's guest? His name is Chandresh Bardwa. If you've read anything about him, I'm sure you're thinking, why is he in an acting podcast? Well, funny enough, Chandresh and I met exactly two years ago this week. It was a random encounter. It was meant to be the universe brought us together, whatever you want to call it, we met on Instagram. And we started messaging and from the beginning we've always had a close connection. Shandresh loves movies, Shandresh loves art and he is an artist himself, he writes poetry and he is very very connected to the film industry as you will hear in this podcast. So it's only a matter of time for him to come to this podcast. We are very close friends and his advice and guidance has really been a game changer for me. To be honest, I always struggled a lot with anxiety and fears and self-doubt and it's not that I don't struggle with it anymore, it's always a journey, but it's something that in the past has been a burden and it has been a block that has been an issue for my acting and my acting career. And when I was in New York, that was something I was always struggling and dealing with. So when I moved to LA and I met Chandresh and through his post on Instagram and through just our friendship, his knowledge has been life-changing for me. So I thought it would be very helpful for you guys to, to bring him on the podcast because I know as actors we do struggle a lot with mindset anxiety and so many things that we doubt ourselves and I think it's always helpful to find a perspective from someone else and to have tips from someone who knows what they're talking about and someone who can actually give us actionable steps for us to be better. Shandresh is a seventh generation lineage holder from a family of Indian gurus who practice the tantric tradition. Now most of you might have heard about Tantra and I am sure it is not what you think it is and we will talk about it later on in this episode. Chandresh has a book, it's called Break the Norms, which I truly recommend for anybody. It's an incredible book about 
questioning anything that is in society. It's a book about sex and love and religion and life and your career. It's a book about questioning your beliefs and the culture you've been raised in. Shandresh also has his own podcast, which is called Break the Norms, like the book. This podcast is beautiful. If you're an actor, if you're not an actor, he talks about life. He talks about art. He talks about gratefulness. He talks about conscience. He talks about many beautiful stories that really leave you thinking. And he has beautiful meditations. If that is something you're looking to get into, it is a great place to start. I could be talking about Shandresh forever, but I don't think he needs further introduction. You will hear all you need to hear about him in this interview. So let's give a very warm welcome to Shandresh Bardois to the Actors Vow. Welcome to the Actors Vow, Shandresh. It's such an honor to have you here today. Thank you, Denise. Uh, absolutely an honor to be here. And I feel finally I'm on a podcast where I want to be. <laughs> you know, because I want to be on the podcast where they talk about movies and stories and poetry, uh, but no one calls me on these podcasts. Everyone who calls me is the meditation and the yoga podcast. Yeah, this and, is definitely different for you. Right. And, I, you know, it's funny thing. I was uh, on my podcast app this morning mm -hmm. and I realized that 90% of the podcast I'm subscribed to, they all are story related movie related uh, mm. i don't I, and i don't listen to any spiritual podcast or a youtube video if you see my youtube recommendations it's usually you know interviews with storytellers from different parts of the world i don't even know their names i'm driving i just hit the play and it's just in the background that's the sound i i live on so it's uh, finally i'm on a podcast where i belong i think <laughs> that's amazing okay yeah because the first question i had for you is you know i always ask all actors that come here what made them want to be an actor but you're obviously not an actor so my question for you is what impact have actors and films have had in your life i think so much of what i am so much of my thinking process is due to the actors, the artists, you know, that I grew up watching. Uh, I, you know, I had a feeling you might ask this question and I was not able to find the perfect answer. Uh -huh. because there are multiple answers to this, honestly. I think one of the answer could be the cultural, you know, uh, you know, cultural pattern of India. I grew up in India and in India, movies have always been a very, you know, powerful medium to entertain, yeah. to engage people. And uh, I think maybe that was one of the reasons that I, I started being inspired by the actors a lot. Uh, but no one in my family watches movies, no one. Like my father still falls asleep when he's watching a movie. <laughs> and whenever, as a kid, we have gone with him, he's either sleeping or he'll, you know, make us sit in the theater and he'll, he'll walk out for just his own thing and he'll come back when the movie is done. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one in my family who is so much into cinema. I, if you ask me how they have impacted me, I think the way I share my work, uh, it's very, very much based on the storytelling I grew up watching. Yes. Uh, so much of the, you know, uh, content I share either on podcast or writing, it's heavily influenced by the cinema I watch, uh, because, uh, I think it was just something that started engaging me on a very, at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, my initial memories of my childhood, you know, they are either engaging in the spiritual work or, you know, the cinema. That's all. There was nothing else I really enjoyed. I'd, still, it's the same. And, uh, you know, one of my father's very good friend, he's a you know, businessman. He used to tell my father that Chandresh is on a good path. Movies will bring him money. Spirituality will bring him the peace. But I just didn't end up going into the movie industry, you know, for, as a professional. But I really feel that might have been the second option if I was not doing what I do. I still feel it might happen. I hope it happens, mm. honestly. Yeah. What part of it do you think would happen? Directing? Yeah, behind the scenes for sure, you know, behind the camera. Uh, I think directing, story writing, these two... Mm. Uh, even when I watch the interviews, it's mainly the the writing part or the directing part. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would 
love listening a Quentin Tarantino describing how he shot a particular scene. Mm -hmm. Just the passion on their face and how they get charged up when they're yes. explaining a particular scene. It just blows my mind, you know. And even when I watch a movie, I know this is how you also watch movies, you know, but when I'm watching a movie, I'm so much focused on the light or the other aspects yes. of that. All the technical and aspects. Yeah. I know. And people around me, they're like, can we just watch like the movie? You know, why do we have to be a movie critic whenever we watch a movie? Yes. Uh, yes. But it's just how my brain is wired. You to, can't to help watch. it. Yes. I can't help it. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great because that's why I wanted you to come because I've told you many times I when you talk in your podcast or your book I always think there's so many similarities between acting and what you talk about mm -hmm. it relates in so many ways and I wanted you to explain before we start what Tantra is because you know everybody listening are actors and I think there might be some wrong ideas of what Tantra is Right. Yeah. So I know many people understand Tantra as this acrobatic sexuality that can give you 20,000 orgasms in one hour, but uh, it's not that <laughs> Tantra actually literally means the, a science. And in spirituality, Tantra is defined as the science of self-awareness. And that's exactly how we, you know, uh, uh, practice Tantra. I come from lineage of Tantra teachers. All the Tantra gurus I know, they really conduct Tantra as a science. It's, there are multiple like scientific, uh, in a spiritual science experiments that we conduct in Tantra. It could be through meditation, mantras, could be through just, you know, focusing on certain breathing techniques. Everything that you see on meditation in the mainstream spirituality today, it's all taken from Tantra, every single bit of it. Uh, even the, you know, people practicing, you know, Hindu uh, methods and uh, meditations in the you know, Western culture, mm -hmm. or even yoga, every bit of that come from Tantra. And it's really, a, you know, infinite science that like one lifetime is not enough to understand Tantra. Sex is one aspect of Tantra. And that aspect is really channeling of the sexual energy uh, right. tantra right. will say your you know your sex anger greed addiction anything that's within you that may be you know labeled as unwanted or wrong will mm -hmm. channel it it's like you know getting the coal and creating a diamond out of it you know it's you know because coal under very deep pressure you know turns into diamond mm -hmm. uh, so that's what tantra is it will translate channel and transcend the same energy into higher consciousness but you know i can keep talking about it for next two hours so i think this this definition is you know good enough that, I that guess. makes sense yes i think that clarified for everybody what tantra is not at least yes um right. you just opened a tantra school so i, well, I wanted to congratulate you officially for Thank Leela. You. I'm just so excited um, to see what you're going to do with it. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. You know, Leela, so Leela means play of consciousness. And uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll share something very funny about the name, because I think mm -hmm. that's related to actors so much. So Leela means play of consciousness. Leela is also my grandmother's name. And that was the reason I chose this name because, you know, they both are, you know, something very close to my heart. But Leela, you know, uh, in, a, in a regular Hindi language means play, like theater, act. Okay. Mm, okay. So every year there are, you know, spiritual broadways, hap you know, happen in India. There's a festival that happens in November, very famous festival called Diwali, the Festival of Lights. Yes. In the office, Dwight explained it so well, but Michael, of course, he had, yes. he brought in the Halloween aspect of it. But that, the way Dwight explained it, that's what Diwali is. Okay. So around Diwali every year, they have this nine-day play about the Lord Ram and his wife Sita, who is you know a buck, uh, kidnapped by this demon, and he saves her. So that entire play is called Ram Leela. The play of Ram, the king who saved his wife. Mm -hmm. So Leela also means play. Uh, Leela means act. Leela means, you know, some, where all the, you know, actors join and they join in a play. In spirituality, we use Leela because, you know, the Tantra would say, we all are artists. We all are just playing roles here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's funny, the same word has a, such a deep spiritual, you know, meaning, but also 
it's very equally you know, relevant and profound for the actors and artists. Mm, I love that. I didn't know. You know yeah. I, I, I also never thought about it until, you know, we started talking that Leela means an act, a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, literally a theater act is Leela, you know. That's awesome. Okay. I know. So um, let's dive deeper now into Tantra and its relationship for actors and for acting. Um, I remember in the beginning of your book, Break the Norms, you were talking about how you had to um, break out of this conditioning. And one of the things that uh, caught my attention was that you say that you thought you had to be the best and that mm -hmm. being yourself was just not an option. And I think all actors can relate to that. You know, I had this um, teacher, this mentor in acting school, and she always said, the hardest thing you'll ever have to learn is to just be. And that has always stayed with me. And you know, as actors, we have teachers and coaches and you know, the industry telling us we have to act this way or look this way if we want to be successful, but that's not true. So I wanted you to tell us about your experience with that. You know, uh, th th there are so many layers to what you asked, Denise. Uh, mm -hmm. I think when I grew up, uh, no one, you know, tell, no one tells you that you have to be different to be accepted, but it's something you start observing, right? That if you're just being yourself, uh, you may not have enough, you know, friends around you, you may not have enough people liking you because you're being yourself. And I have always been very introvert, very, you know, just very much in my own inner world. And I realize if I'm just quiet, not engaging with anyone, I, I'll not have any friend and I didn't yes. miss that feeling also, honestly, but I could see, but you want to be liked, you want to be accepted and acknowledged as a young kid. That was, you know, really a challenge. And one of the things I also observed in my father, uh, you know, he's always been a very unconventional spiritual teacher in a way, because if you Google spiritual gurus, you'll find they all look alike in a way, you know, mm -hmm longer beard, the, you know, beads around them, the, the, uh, you know, outfits they wear, they have a similar orange color. And my father is not at all that way. And yeah. that was also as a child, very interesting thing to observe. I couldn't analyze in those days, but it used to intrigue me that if he's a guru, why he doesn't dress up as one, mm -hmm. why he doesn't have a beard or why doesn't, you know, like he keeps short hair, doesn't keep a you know, beard at all. Uh, I think he, he was probably one of those subconscious impact in my life that you could be who you are. People will respect yes, you yes. for your talent, for your skill, for the work you do in society. But, you know, it, it takes us a long time in life to really embrace that I can be myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, if I have to be liked and accepted, that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. And this is why I remember you noticed that when I announced the school Leela, there was one month where I kept on saying that I will do it my way yes. uh, because it's a big deal for me, you know, to do things your way. I, uh, I think if someone interferes in my creative process by interfering, I mean, if someone suppresses my creative process, I feel it, it, as a very violent attack on my existence. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, many great big financial opportunities. I, had to let go because there were people in the spiritual industry who were, who made it very clear, if you join us, you'll be basically doing things our way. And I was like, I'm happy not joining you and letting go of that because I want to do it my way. I don't want to play that game. Even in the movie, and this is, uh, uh, it's something I learned and got inspired from the movie industry a lot because you see that in the movies, in every a lot. culture. You know? Yes. It could be Indian cinema, Hollywood, or cinema of you know other countries there are actors who are playing the game right who are mm -hmm. just doing everything that the audience want them to see and they have a different fan base but then there are actors who are just performing they are artists and for some reason like i think these are the artists i i look up to Absolutely. and i all my favorite artists have been those who did not have that uh crazy swag, you know, loyal fan base, but they were amazing, beautiful artists. And in the longer run, they cultivated like a loyal, very loyal fan following. Mm -hmm. And they are the, still the ones I, you know, watch. And I, I know 
their victory reminds me of, you know, my victory in some way. And this is what my relationship is with artists. And it's such a very powerful connection I feel with the artists that they they taught me just be you yes, and you yes. will find the space even the movies I started liking as a younger kid in my small town in India they were not available in any, any DVD parlors so I would go there I'll mention the name they're like who watches these movies I still remember there was this guy you know very big DVD you know studio in our town and he would have every movie and uh, when I would you know, mention the movies I want to watch. He's like, no one watches these movies, you know, and they were mentioned this one army, you know, there's one army officer, he comes once in three months. So he sometimes asks for these kind of movies. And you are the second one. And I, I was like, do you have it? He was like, no, like, we don't, we don't want to keep this one DVD that, that will right. be in demand once in a year. So that was my struggle also with, with, you know, uh, going there but I mean now we are surrounded with you know movies on demand on phone tablets everywhere so, but this is uh, it's my source of really daily inspiration honestly yeah. yeah and sometimes those movies are the best like you know the commercial oh movies that sell out I don't consider them you know good movies that Same. I will watch yeah. again and again so Absolutely. And, and what you said has had such an impact on me because I know you mm-hmm. always say I'll do it my way And so many times, you know, you're pushed, especially in this industry, it's like, well, if you do this, maybe you'll get the money or you'll get the role. And you think, well, I really want that role. But then so many times I found myself in that situation and I've thought about what you just said, you know, or even on social media, like posting this will get me more followers. But is that, Mm -hmm. you know, in line with who I am? And I think that's, yeah, that's very important for artists. Absolutely. And how do you feel, Denise, with uh, with uh, all of that norms and regulations and all the rat race you have to play? Do you think it's fair to every artist that they have to join that race? And if you don't join it, do you think it's a huge price you have to pay for not joining that race? It is, but I think it's a huge yeah. price you have to pay if you join it too. It's, um, it's yeah, another price. Different. It's something you have to consider I you know I always say I rather not be famous not be in Hollywood movies and play roles that move me and help me grow as an artist than you know have all the money and the fame because we think that people with the money and the fame are happy and it doesn't necessarily mean they are but a lot of times those actors can't even choose the roles they want to play sometimes they're put into this you know box and that's the role they always end up playing Oh my God, I know. Uh, so many faces are coming to my mind right now. Yes, who right. Were, who, who are just stereotyped, right? To play yes. the same kind of role all their life. And mm-hmm. when you see them in a different role, you're like, they're such great actors. Yes. Why they had to play that one dumbed down role all their life, you mm-hmm. know? I was watching uh, Adam Sandler's Uncut Gems. Yes. Uh, yes. Right? That yes. was, I think, probably one of those last few movies I saw in theater. Uh, and when I was watching that, I was like, you know, I did not like some of his la- recent movies. I think he signed some Netflix deal and he just was manufacturing movies yes. after another. And I was like, I missed the good actor that he is. And Uncut Gems, you see the glimpses of that a lot. It's a very dark movie. So for some reason, I like dark cinema. That just makes me very uncomfortable for a few days. Same. That movie made me very uncomfortable. I was yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. But that movie I was so unexpected for, for him because that's not what he always does. We always I think know. he's that comedy, silly actor and he can actually. Yeah, I know. Serious. Yeah. I remember when I was doing public talks in those days. I saw, this is just a habit. Uh, uh, it always unconsciously happens when I start a public meditation talk. I start with recommending movies and asking people, have you seen that movie? You know, and people who don't know me, they're like, why he's talking about breaking bad. It's supposed we're here to be for Tantra. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I remember I was recommending Uncut Gems to a lot of people in those days that you mm-hmm. should watch it just because to encourage the art, the real actor in him that, you know, we, we love you in this kind of role too. So please do more of this kind of cinema. It was very unconventional and unusual yeah. movie. <laughs> Well, I I think the reason for what we're talking is the industry and the job we actors do are on complete opposites, like the business Mm -hmm. part of it. 
And I think that that's a concept I'd like for you to explain. It, it, I think it relates to masculine and feminine energy. Um, mm -hmm. So if you can explain what that is, then we can talk about yeah. that. Wow. The, I love how you connected masculine and feminine with the industry and the work we do. They mm -hmm. definitely are two different aspects. I know many people uh, in the movies and in spirituality who might be excellent in their creative work. Yes. But they are not at all wired to run the business, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I think it's something, you know, the sooner you embrace and accept it, the better it is. Because if you love your work, if you, if you have a passion for it, and if you feel very strongly about it, then focus all your energies on creating the craft, creating the art. And the other aspects, you know, slowly, gradually start delegating, start having freelancers, you know, when you're just starting out, yes. because yes. they too are different planets. And the people who manage, they're also very differently wired. The people who manage the industry, mm -hmm. they, they, many of them are not even the, the creative artists, right? In their not head. at all. They are fully into numbers fully into the marketing of it and the people who are actually the blood and the soul of that work, they are not wired to see the numbers, you mm -hmm. know, to understand the numbers. It happens in the, you know, spiritual, uh, in the publishing industry, in the book industry, mm -hmm. it happens a lot in the movies, happens a lot in the spirituality itself. Now, I think we are moving in a very interesting era and we have to be very, very careful. You and I are still like aware of this, change happening in the social media but the generation who's i don't know like teenager right now right they are they don't even know there's other way of you know running life than you know the other than the phone screens yes. because now yes. what is happening every artist every creator i see on social media they have this pressure they they have to balance or or blend the business and the creativity mm -hmm. and sometimes business becomes too heavy on their head uh you know that numbers become too heavy and they'll just randomly start creating stuff and that's where i think the artist in them starts to lose the grip i i've seen um uh, many of my friends who were amazing artists you know uh but simply because the pressure of you know satisfying the industry trends that became too big yes um yeah. but like you said it is a masculine versus feminine kind of thing um the uh, you know in tantra we define feminine energy as the one who's creative playful and the one who's very receptive to the dimensions around you so as an artist when you're creating you know be receptive to the feminine within you so that's the journey where you are simply channeling a certain unknown force where you start just creating stuff and when it comes to put that work out there then you basically channel the masculine, which is the energy of the leader in you, you know, the calculative moves maybe, but it is a balance, you know, in Tantra, we always say, you know, no man is a complete man and no woman is a complete woman. In every living being, there is a uh, masculine and feminine. Yes. The day you unite both, the day you balance both, that's when the game will change. In fact, one of the deities we, you know, honor in um, Tantra, his name is Shiva. The deity of Shiva, his image is half masculine, half feminine. You know, it's beautiful image. Uh, but that's the lesson in Tantra that I think every artist can, can you know, channel and, and embark. Yeah, right? it's so important for artists. But I think it's very, very hard because it's what we're saying. You, yeah. you know, I got out of school and I was one of the ones who thought, I just want to do the artistic part. I hate numbers. I hate, you know, business, right. networking, all those things. And I said, I don't have to do that. But I moved to LA and I soon found out that was impossible if I wanted to no. start doing work. So it's always that balance, right? Like not trying to do everything for like, what do they want? But mm -hmm. also you have to give and <laughs> give mm -hmm. in sometimes. It, it's a very hard balance. So it's for you... So I know it's a very long answer what I'm asking you, but what are some things that uh, actors can do to find that balance? Some practices maybe? I feel one of the most important thing that every artist 
uh, you know, got to do it, it should be in the top list is meditation. Mm -hmm. Uh, And meditation, you know, I mean, nowadays, meditation has become everything, you know, Uh, people drink coffee, and they, they say it's my meditation in the morning to drink coffee. So, you know, coffee is drinking coffee. It's not meditation. Yes. Uh, In Tantra, the Sanskrit word is sadhana, which means a spiritual disciplined practice that you do every day. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I feel if you really want to honor the artist in you, first of all, create a separate corner, you know, in your apartment, in your house, wherever you are, have that separate corner, maybe a meditation cushion, maybe a table there, you know, where you light a candle, and maybe, you know, if you're writing a script or if there's any mood board you want to create, yes, you know, yes. the best roles you want to have, just create that artistic altar, you know, for yourself. Honor the muse, you know, that has been inspiring you for all these years. And even just to honor that muse or to honor that artist and you show up for your meditation every day. That would be the number one thing I would recommend. A daily meditation and you know those who understand chakras i'll quickly explain the chakra because mm-hmm. that might be a little important so chakras are basically energy centers within us and there are hundreds and thousands of chakras within but uh, the most popular are the seven chakras and as an artist you could focus on just specific chakras you know uh, i work with many artists so i know you know sometimes uh, you know many artists artists they have the trauma the old pain, old suppression, and that interferes in their complete expression. You know, they cannot go beyond that. So that's the navel center for you. Meditate on the navel center every single day. And when I say meditate on it, it simply means bring the awareness, the attention around that navel center. Mm. Breathe around the navel. I recommend either do a gentle breathing or do conscious breathing, which is inhaling, holding, and exhaling and do that for five, seven minutes and have one intention, you know, for yourself, focus on the intentions. What's your intention as an artist, not the goal, but intention is your intention to, you know, cultivate the perfect, you know, uh, role for yourself, attract the perfect role, or is your intention to work with a particular director? I would say, make your intentions fluid. So do not be very rigid that if I do not work with Tarantino, I'm going to leave the industry. You know, that's uh, like, I know some people, they're like, uh, I will not. So there was someone I know who was very unwell. And he said, I said, you know, get a treatment, you know, go to uh, this place, which was out of, you know, America. He said, I won't leave this place until I get an Oscar. I said, to get an Oscar, you have to live. (laughs) and create the That's work terrible. I know it was a terrible disease I mean I, he's fine now so I'm glad mm. uh, you know he, he got the treatment but you cannot sacrifice you know the artist needs to grow and bloom so meditation self-care is important navel center is super important second most important is heart center mm-hmm. because that's the your emotions right yes. your feelings compassion emotion and third throat your expression mm-hmm. And throat chakra is not just the center of your expression, but also the center where the physical energies and the non-physical unite. Mm -hmm. So if you meditate on the throat center, it's such a beautiful blend of the physical energies and the non-physical, which is that, which is what we call the spiritual or the divine consciousness. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. A daily 20 minute meditation focus on any of these three you don't have to focus on all the three at once but any of these three to begin with and just you know planting the right intention in the process i would say if you stick to this routine for 10 to 15 minutes for one month major changes could happen major changes yeah absolutely yeah i've Mm -hmm. i've been doing that since i met you and it really has been life-changing i have my little altar with my acting Mm -hmm affirmations and <laughs> prayers and for sure it's it's very helpful you you just said something <clears throat> that made me think of something interesting and i want to hear your opinion <clears throat> you said that you know we actors or artists we might have traumas that are blocking our art but there's this interesting concept that i've heard in the artist community that some artists are scared of healing because they think this uh, trauma Mm -hmm. or this darkness in them actually is what makes them different and makes their art flow. Right, yeah. 
they, they, they like it mean. yeah they like it yeah yeah you know i so there are two ways of it i completely understand what you're saying many artists are not willing to heal that pain because they are like oh this is what's channeling me yes uh yes. but i have seen those artists i've observed their life it doesn't age well you know it doesn't the, no yeah, but professionally life. it does i don't think in the personal life it does but yeah. it's see the challenges when you are not healing the pain when you're not healing the wound not willing to go deeper into the root of it maybe the age of your art will be let's say you know 10 years 15 years but if you understand the root of your wound and start to heal it from the roots not the symptoms but from the roots i promise you the age of your art will double at least you'll be able to create art for another 15 years so from 15 to 30 that's a big deal so do it for your art and you know i started my journey with writing poetry it was silly you know poetry uh, i would just write whatever i wanted to write and as a teenager it was pretty much putting my feelings you know pains right. unexpressed right. emotions on the paper and i used to like that and one day i realized i was reading my own poetry and i was like this is like very depressing very painful and I, I started working on those elements, mm. you know, the ones that were making me write that. And it, I clearly saw that it was making me weak uh, emotionally to constantly manifest that kind of pain. Yes, uh, yes. And because it was fueling my, you know, writing, writing uh, art. Uh, and from the time I've started healing, healing is also not the right word, understanding the root of it. Mm -hmm. When I understood the root of those pains, insecurities, not only my ability to create multiplied, but I was able to also create uh, my work on a much bigger uh, spectrum, you know, collectively. So now yes. it was the vision expanded. And I have observed the artists who are obsessed with that pain. The age for their art is short. It's, it could be the greatest art they create in those four years, but it, it, it's always, you know, it ends in a very ugly painful place for them you know yes. the but the ones who were able to channel and understand that pain they end up they keep creating the art because the truth is there is enough abundance for everyone the creative Absolutely. abundance is so powerful so this is your mind telling you that maybe i sh i'm supposed to create only this much of work and i'm going to use my pain i'm not going to you know heal this wound the tr this is your mind, you know, seeing the limit, the limitations, but your awareness, your consciousness, it's beyond limits. Yes, if you, yes. if you become available to that infinite creativity, you'll be surprised how much you have to create, how much need it will be done through you. Yes. Yes. And, and the way I see it is, you know, if it's going to bring in another depth to your work, because Absolutely. you have been there, but you have healed. So now you have both sides that you understand just because mm -hmm. you've healed from it doesn't mean you, you still can't understand that part. And I think it's Absolutely. important as actors to have all those experiences. Absolutely. I feel it's also very powerful to witness, uh, you know, that whole journey uh, from a distance that oh, I have been there. Yes. And this is now how I can capture it on in my words on camera and, you know, in, in all those ways it's important that you go through that journey and then go beyond it. But the mind will keep telling you, stay there, you know, yes. be stuck in that zone. But it's that's also not what's often. easier, yeah. staying it's where easier. you are. It's mm -hmm. definitely the comfortable zone, what you know. Yes. It's way easier. And this is another challenge, you know, that I, where I think meditation can help a lot. When an artist creates a great role, or they create a great story and it becomes so successful, the mind starts telling them, this is it. Now you are a comedy writer. Now you are, you know, dark movie expert. So they, they are not able to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I, that's a tragedy. And I think the, the one uh, powerful method or tool that can help you go beyond it is again, meditation. Yeah. Because meditation, you know, in Tantra, we define meditation as the death of mind, you know, 
the mind, the old dies so that the new can born, mm-hmm. uh, which yeah. means the new awareness, the new creative force, it wants to create a lot through you. So it will, you know, wrap the old one in the most elegant way so that you can embrace the new story, the new journey that's showing up for you. Yes. Uh, does it make sense? Yes, absolutely. And I think it's, it's great. I've had so many guests in the podcast that have told me they meditate. And mm, nice. I, I found it amazing. Yeah, so many right. artists and actors are starting to realize of what you're saying and right. more and more starting to meditate. So, yeah. yeah, I think now the, I always call this, this time as the golden age for the, the storytellers yeah. because you can tell stories through so many mediums, right? Yes. From a 15 second, you know, TikTok or, or a reel from, you know, full fledged documentary movie or, you know, web series. It's the golden age for creators. And I'm so happy to know that uh, the storytellers are meditating because that will just channel a new, new, you know, like art from them. Yes, I, I can't wait to see where this goes for sure. So, right. you know, every time I ask um, the listeners of the podcast or actors or you know, friends that are actors, what the biggest struggle is, there's always one thing that comes up mm. and that's anxiety. Mm. So I want to dive into this a little bit because, you know, I think our job carries a lot of anxiety around it, you know, just, you know, going to auditions and you don't know how it's going to go or even our careers in themselves because they're very unstable. We don't know where we're going to be the next day. Mm. And I know you've experienced it. I know in your podcast, you told the story when you were about to launch your book, Break the Norms. And you, you said that you had the box with printed books in your house, but your anxiety didn't even allow you to open the box. And then when you did, everything was fine. And you know, it reminded me, I had a very similar experience when I played Peter Pan. And I remember I had to learn my lines and I had the right. script on the table forever and I looked at it and I just could not open it and start learning the lines because it was so important to me Mm. and the anxiety I was developing and I thought it was so similar then when I opened it everything was fine Mm -hmm. so I wanted to hear from you what you know what you think anxiety is I you know my relationship with uh, anxiety has changed a lot in the past few years Mm. Uh, you know I've been going to uh, drug rehabs to give talks for many years now and uh, every you know pretty much it's every week sometimes few times a week uh, in this pandemic it, it at one point it became five times a week you know that wow. was the darkness you know like expanding there wow. so I have I always ask them what's what do you want to focus on today what do you want to you know meditate on today in the last 10 years the answers have not changed it's always one anxiety wow so yeah, that made me, you know, look at anxiety from many different perspectives. And when I experienced that, you know, darkness, when the book was about to launch, mm-hmm. it gave me a very personal, like, you know, one-on-one encounter with it. Yeah. Uh, I started, now I see anxiety as a direction, as a sign that something is not in alignment with you. You know, it's almost like when you have fever, the fever is not the problem. Fever is telling you there are weaker cells, immunity is low, you know, Uh, so you go within and fix the problem that's causing the fever, but fever is the sign. If you don't have fever, like, you know, with COVID-19, if there are no symptoms, you're not even getting to know. So the symptoms are helpful signs that, okay, something is wrong. Let's fix it. Anxiety is also one of those symptoms that you are not in the present moment, you're either somewhere in the past or you're projecting a certain future or forcing a certain future. So when you are not in that present moment awareness, anxiety will show up and anxiety reminds you, look within, in what area, in what thought process you're not in alignment, something you're either not able to let go of a certain, you know, role, label, story in the head something is becoming too much right now. So anxiety is very, you know, individual experience. And, you know, there could be multiple reasons why someone will feel that. But one interesting way to handle that is asking yourself, you know, like I suggest the mantra POP, pause, observe and proceed. Mm -hmm. So pause in that moment when you have anxiety and observe what's the root cause of this anxiety. So if I'm giving audition, uh, 
I see many talented people around me and my mind is telling me, maybe you'll not be selected today, but I'm still going there and I'll be rejected. And in one hour, I'm going to feel such a you know, deep like pain of rejection. Now that's anxiety. And it's going to bring fear, uh, anger, you know, feeling of not being seen by, by others. Yes. Now you have to observe why this anxiety is building up, why this anger is building up. And if you, you know, honestly uh, uh, ask the question and observe the answers, you might realize that it's showing up because my mind has this fixed definition or idea of success. Mm-hmm. My mind pr- probably thinks if you don't get this role, then you will also not get the 10 next roles. Then you'll not be become an actor. You might have to go back to your city and, you know, join your family business or there's no family business. Maybe you'll be on, on you some have like, nothing. Night, like yes. you have nothing, right? So mind starts to bring the fear. What's the root of fear? You know, not being able to embrace the unknown. So, you know, one layer after layer opens up. And I've seen if people pause, ask the right questions, and if they have a meditation as a daily supporting tool, they will save themselves from this unnecessary anxiety because it's not helping them, you know. Yeah. It yeah. takes away the future opportunities from you. And uh, that's why I think we need to, you know, make meditation a daily, you know, practice to show up because one meditation can really, you know, turn around your complete life. Uh, even now, when I go through any moment of anxiety or stress, this is what I do, POP, pause, observe, and proceed. And you'll, you'll realize it's so funny, so much of that anxiety and anger, it's just cooking up in the head. It's not real, nothing, there's no real foundation for it. It's all in the head. It is like a, you know, a story in the head with different dialogues, you know, characters which don't exist. It's just in the mind. Yes. Yes. That that was very helpful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's something we all can do, you know, before a show, before auditioning, for sure. So the last thing I want to talk about before we let you go is <laughs> another thing that I think actors really struggle with, and that's rejection. You know, th- th- there's this thing in the industry where they say an actor's job is not to do films or theater or anything. It's just to audition. That's our job because that's what we do on a daily right. basis. And auditioning right. always ends up, almost always, in a no. Mm-hmm. You hear 50 no's before you hear one yes. And sometimes, you know, it takes years until you make it or become successful. So mm-hmm. what, what is your idea of rejection and what is the best way to handle it you know uh, by the way uh, in the act- acting industry you know rejection is such a big thing even for the writers mm-hmm. it's a huge thing you know on twitter i follow like group of writers and this is what they also say <laughs> the writer's job is to be keep rejecting by the publishers yes uh, and this is so true and it's you know audition is unfortunately unpaid job right uh, it, it's actor's first job but it's unpaid yes and that's why it brings up so much frustration you know uh, i feel rejection is redirection you know mm-hmm. you have to really uh, you know first of all give yourself the trust compassion that you're showing up for it there are you know many people i'm sure you know many people who want to be actors, but they're not doing the work to be an actor, you know, yes. may not be going for every audition, may not be working hard enough. So first of all, you have to give yourself that compassion and applause that at least you showed up. Absolutely. Showing up is half the battle one. Imagine you had, you know, it was written in your destiny that you have to be rejected 50 times before you become the, you know, one of the greatest actors out there. But if you don't show up for those 50 auditions, you will not even meet your destined truth, right? I remember the guy, I forgot his name, but the Australian guy, The Lost, the TV show. Mm, okay. Have you, you, have you seen have the show? I have not seen it, no, but I know okay. about it. There is one Australian guy. Uh, his name is uh, Sawyer, I think Sawyer or something in the show. Okay. So okay. he was about to leave LA and go back to his real estate license and you know work for that and this was the last audition that he gave. And, you know, he There's became... so many stories of actors like I this. know, right? Yes. 
Yes. I know someone in India who worked as a gatekeeper. You know, imagine being a gate, like just standing outside the gate at, and it was not a fancy building, just a regular small building. He stayed, he worked as a night watchman. And now he, you know, he has a movie coming up on Netflix every month, pretty much a new movie every other month. He's one of the most celebrated actors, but he struggled for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ma- there are many stories like that. And I, one thing I've learned from them is rejection is redirection. Mm-hmm. If you avoid, you know, if also another point is there are karmic contracts we have to fulfill. So maybe it's in the karmic contract that I, ha- I will be rejected by Fox, by Netflix, by Amazon Prime before Disney signed me up for the next ride. Right. You know, it's if I really bring in the spiritual, you know, uh, preaching here, you have to go through that uneasy rejection so that you can finally meet your truth. Mm-hmm. Finally, mm-hmm. you know, land on that role, which you were born to do. And I, I really feel there are artists who were born to play certain roles. You know, it just had to happen with them. Yes. There is karmic contract written for each one of us. And I feel uh, if you show up for it, you're at least, you know, doing your part. So meditate on rejection as a redirection. Mm-hmm. Um, and not many people know my podcast was a result of rejection because I was working on this very powerful book on Tantra and a big publisher, you know, they were in talks with me and they were like, you know, we love this and all of that. And they, you know, made me fly to New York for a meeting early morning, like 7.30. And I was like, all ready. And they, the meeting went well. The meeting was only and only about marketing. They didn't discuss anything about the book. And I asked them like, do you want to know about the book? And they were like, oh, you know, we know your work. You're great at your work. So yeah, we just want to know how would you promote on Instagram? We just want to know how would you promote here and there. Hmm. At the end of the meeting, they were like really happy. They said, you know, give us a few days. It takes a few days to prepare the contract. But in three hours, they send email of rejection and no explanation. And when my agent reached out, they said, oh, it's marketing. You know, we want a bigger marketing for this book. And it was a very, you know, uh, heavy rejection for me. Right. Uh, and this was the mantra. You know, I took my own medicine. I opened the spiritual, you know, closet and I was like, okay, I'll take the redirection med- medicine today. <laughs> so I r- reminded myself, how can I use this rejection as a redirection? And the one truth that showed up for me was, you know, create your own, you know, platform, create your own medium. So okay. that's how podcast happened. It really changed everything about my work honestly and that's why Leela is happening now because they will not change right the industry will not change but you have to change your perspective your ways of sharing and uh, how you can be really out there with your unapologetic expression Mm -hmm. so I for those who are listening you know celebrate the rejections because you never know what rejection could create a redirection Mm -hmm. Uh, if you are blocked not open to it, then you will miss that opportunity. Yeah. I think most things we do, not just us, like most artists come from rejection. You were saying your podcast, my podcast was the same, you know, like the pandemic came, there was nothing. This podcast started because the rejection that there was nothing that we could do as artists. And so many other things come from that, you know, writing a movie. So many artists have written a movie because they didn't get the role themselves. So they write it themselves. So yeah, I, there's always that opportunity out there. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, again, this is something I learned from the artists to begin with, because the traditional gurus don't talk about that. There's also this mentality, you know, that we don't want to be vulnerable, but artists, you know, grows in vulnerability. So yes. it's through the artist. I, you know, I got to know all of these lessons. So I, I remember there was this one powerful teaching I shared in my college article and I still share that it's about relationship. It came from a Bollywood movie oh. <laughs> and I, I, I've just given my spiritual twist on it. And they were like, Oh my God, is that a Tantra teaching in my head? I'm like, what do I tell them? It's a, it's Bollywood a, 90s, movie. It's a 90s Bollywood movie. <laughs> no. But I think if, you know, if you love stories, if you love poetry, there's so much spiritual wisdom in them. So you got to just, you know, make the best of it. Absolutely. I have two quick questions for you. Um, First one, give us three actors that have impacted your life. 
Uh, three actors. Uh, I would say first one is Irfan Khan. You know, it was his birthday yesterday. He's the one who was in Lunchbox, Namesake, Jurassic Park. And he also did this movie with Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he he passed away last year, which was such a tragedy, you know, for for that artist lover in me. First one is Irfan Khan. Second would be, uh, I would say Tom Hanks, Mm -hmm. because I saw his cast away when I was in India. I was a school kid. And in those days, we were fascinated by the typical, usual, you know, like diehard movies or Bollywood romance. And Castaway was like just one man <laughs> on an island. And I remained so engaged, like so, so, so much just captivated by mm-hmm. what he did. Uh, and I, I still feel, uh, you know, Tom Hanks, his, his face, his energy, it tells me it's a great story, you know, Absolutely. so he's a good storyteller. Third actor, okay, this is, you know, it might be controversial, but I really loved American Beauty and Kevin Spacey was great in it. I and love that I, movie too. I know. And you know, whenever I used to see him, I was like, he, he's, he cannot be normal. There's something really dark about this guy because you watch him performing yeah. these crazy roles and there's that darkness on his face. And when all the you know news came out about him, I'm like, oh no, it broke my heart. Yeah. Uh, but Kevin Spacey is someone his movies, his work, you know, even his last work in House of Cards, yes. so powerful. Uh, but yeah, these three actors really challenged, uh, you know, my mindset and really pushed me to even, you know, meditate on the storyteller in me. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. And now okay. give us three movies. Oh, three movies. Uh, Uncut, uh, not Uncut Gems, sorry. I don't know why it came to my mind. <laughs> Parasite. Oh, That's- yes. The latest one. Uh, second would be, I think I would say Castaway because it was one of the first movies which opened my mind into a new dimension of stories. Until then, I thought movies were all about fighting, romance, killing the, an enemy, revenge plans. Mm-hmm. So these two, and I, I would, I would want to mention one Bollywood movie which is Dil Se. It's on Netflix. It's a romantic story, but I, I'm not into the typical love stories of uh, you know Bollywood. This one is very interesting. I'll give you, uh, can I give you a brief uh, overview of yes, it? Yes, of course. So it's a story of a generalist who's in love with this girl and he's obsessed with her. He only saw her once and he got just infatuated with her. And uh, he's a radio journalist, you know, radio, like a news reporter. Mm. So in the movie, they interview a lot of people who have become, you know, uh, uh, rebels fighting for their rights with the government. And he gets to know this girl works for those rebels. And on India's Independence Day, she's going to be this human bomb and kill the prime minister. But he's so insanely love with her. So he's in pain that this is the girl I love and she's a terrorist. Mm-hmm. And he, she doesn't let him, you know, uh, uh, she doesn't let him touch her at all. She's like, stay away. She's just very blocked, you know. She's mm-hmm. blocked for love, affection. She's like, we are not made to love. We are human bombs. We are not trained to love or have affection. So stay away. Mm-hmm. So super blocked heart chakra. But on the day she's walking toward the New Delhi, you know, ground where they are going to honor the prime minister and she's going to be there to kill him. He gets to know it. And that's the la- that's the first time he hugs her, and the moment he hugs her, the bomb explodes. Oh, I know. But and mm. when I t- I used I wasn't I was ten year old when I like you know watched this movie. I bought the TV the v- the cassette the VCR you know cassettes yes, the yes. VHS, and my mom was like, "Oh my God, this is the movie you're buying." what is what's about this movie that you love you know dramatic yes yeah it it didn't do very well uh in those times only because people wanted to see you know the the leading actor was the most loved you know romantic actor of india Mm -hmm. Shah Rukh khan they wanted to see him dancing and he was just playing this very dark role but yeah that's the third movie you know dilse parasite castaway let me also add godfather the first one Mm -hmm. uh that it, it just the the family drama and everything yes, I love yes. you know, in that one. Yeah. That's a classic of a perfect movie in many right. ways. Yes. Yeah. And I'm also going to add Life of Pi. Sorry, the five. Oh, You've got yes. the five movies. <laughs> okay. Five is fine too. <laughs> Life of Pi. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for everything you shared with us today. Uh, please tell us where people can find you and your meditations and your work. Uh, so you can find me on cbmeditates.com. That's my website, but that's also my Instagram. And the school that Denise mentioned, Leela, L-E-E-L-A. Uh, the website is leelagurukul.com. I, 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 I'll give you the... Yes, the I'll put it in the show notes. Yes. Yeah, so it will be on the show notes. But thank you for having me. I genuinely, like, I was looking forward to this because I get to speak to you and we talk about <laughs> movies and spirituality, yes. which is always fun. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I love the energy of this whole conversation. And I think Shandresh gave such amazing advice. I think if you can understand everything he was saying and implement it in your life and your career, it can be truly a life changer. I think if we can take something away that is very important from this, it's something we always talk about in this podcast, and that's being true to yourself. We are in an industry that wants all the opposite of that from us, uh, which is very funny. We find ourselves in a funny dichotomy because they ask us to be ourselves when we act. But then the business part of it, the industry that we call is asking for something completely different. And it's very, very hard to remain true to that essence. That is what you are. And that is what makes you an artist and what will make you successful, whatever that means to you. So thank you, Shandresh, again, for joining us in the podcast and for all this amazing advice. Don't forget to check out all his links in the notes section and follow him because he has many more beautiful things to say and to teach in his social media. Before we end the episode today, I want to bring the play of the week. This week's play is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. This is a classic that I'm sure you've heard about, but I am not sure that you have read it or seen a production of it. We have talked in this podcast about Eugene Ionesco, and last week we talked about Jean Paul Sartre, and they all have something in common. Their plays are philosophical. Now, Waiting for Godot is theater of the absurd, like Eugene Ionesco, like we talked about the lesson. Waiting for Godot is a classic, and it might be one of the most famous philosophical plays out there. I think it's something any artist should read. It's a very specific kind of theater, it's very experimental, and I think it's something that might not be for everybody, might, some, might be something that you personally don't enjoy, but it is something that you should definitely read and know about. There are many references to Waiting for Godot in our pop culture, so I think it's something very important that you are familiar with. Make sure to check it out, Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. This will be all for this week. Next week, I have an incredible guest. I'm just going to let you know now who it is because I've told you on the Instagram. If you don't follow the Instagram, go there because I always talk about things that I don't talk about in the podcast. But next week guest is Jared Dixon, aka Aaron Burr from Hamilton. Now, doing that interview was beautiful and we got caught up in talking so much that we ended up recording like almost two hours so that episode is gonna be done in part one and part two so watch out next week for part one of the interview with jared dixon from hamilton thank you so much again for joining me another week this podcast would not be possible without you please remember to subscribe on itunes if you haven't done so and leave a review it's so helpful for the podcast. Also follow the Actors Bound social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. And I will see you next Wednesday. Mm -hmm.